chapter 1.2, The Puzzling Photoelectric Effect. This chapter is about photoelectric effect. Photoelectric effect is an interesting experiment. In this experiment, there are something very, very special, and then scientists at that time cannot explain. Einstein successfully used the particle theory of light to explain photoelectric effect. And by doing so, Einstein get a Nobel Prize in physics. So you may want to know what photoelectric effect is. And so let's take a look of the experiment. It starts with a gold leaf electroscope. It is used to check whether something is charged and to estimate the amount of charge on the charged objects. First of all, we put a metal plate onto the electroscope. We also put a sticker on it to make sure they have good electrical contact. Now then, we charge the electroscope and the metal plates together with a EHT power supply. And we charge them negatively. When they are charged, you can see the gold leaf of the electroscope deflect. It make an angle with the vertical. We then now put a light source, a ordinary light source, illuminate on the plate, and there's nothing can be seen. Next, then we use a ultraviolet light source, and the ultraviolet light make the gold leaf falls down. So when the gold leaf falls, then we may know the charge on the metal plate becomes less, the metal plates discharge. So let me repeat our observation. At the beginning, the copper plate was negatively charged, and the electroscope is also negatively charged. And in this way, the gold leaf is deflected. Later on, when a UV lamp is used, the UV light shines on the copper plate so that the copper plate somehow discharges so that there is less electrons, and so the gold leaf falls. So far, it is not difficult to explain. What happens is, there is ultraviolet lamp illuminate onto the metal plate, and so the electron there may get enough energy so that they may go away, so the electrons are emitted. We call them photoelectrons because they get enough energy from light, so we call them photoelectrons. In this way, the negatively charged metal plate discharges. That means it has then less charge. However, in the first step of the experiment, we use a normal light source. But this normal light source does not make the gold leaf force. So how can we explain this? And yes, because ultraviolet light has high enough energy. But I have a question. If this is just normal light source, just like a light bulb, and it is not ultraviolet, it is only visible light, and I know the energy is not that high, but then I think the electron may, get, may then gather enough energy if the light illuminates onto the plate for a long enough time. Wow. So scientists at that time also think so. They also put a visible light source to illuminate onto the metal plate for a long enough time to see whether the gold leaf falls, but it does not anyway. So isn't it very difficult to explain that only ultraviolet light, which is invisible, can make the gold leaf falls? There are even something more mysterious, more difficult to explain. And this simulation shows you what the actual setup looks like. There is first of all a evacuated tube, that means a vacuum tube. And we may choose from here different kinds of metal to put it on as the metal plate on the left hand side. We may also choose whatever kind of wavelength of light to shine onto the metal plate to start photoelectric effect. And let's now start. Start. And you can see when the wavelength here 
is about 481 nanometer shines on the metal plate. It seems like nothing has happened. And in fact, the emitter gives you zero reading. Now then, I reduce the wavelength of illuminated light. Become shorter and make it even shorter. And now it is already ultraviolet. And still there's nothing. Let me make the wavelength even shorter and shorter and shorter. And just now you can see suddenly there's electrons that come out from the metal plate. And so that on the right hand side, on the emitter, you can find a reading. So the emitter reading may let you calculate how many electrons are collected, and that is how many electrons are emitted from the metal plate. Okay, so it seems like 205 nanometer is already short enough. But what about we make it like 214, 220, 231, 237. Still okay, isn't it? There are still photo electrons. 2, 5, 9. Still okay. Look at this. I make it 282. No more. So, there is a wavelength shorter than that. Then there will be photo electrons. And then longer than this. For example, 265. Sorry, no electrons at all. No photo electrons anymore. Let's make it 264. Can I? Okay, you can see 263. There can be photo electrons. But for 265, no photo electrons anymore. So there is a short enough wavelength shorter than this, then there will be photoelectrons. And then longer than this, sorry, there would not be photoelectrons anyway. Anyway. When I say anyway, I mean even if we increase the intensity. Let me try it again. Just now, what we said. Two, six, three, there will be photoelectrons. But then two, six, five, then there will be none produced. At that time, some of you may want to increase the intensity, and so I do so 100%. And I'm sorry, even that very strong ultraviolet light of wavelength 265 nanometer, it doesn't make the copper plates produce any single photoelectrons. So what about a shorter wavelength? Now I make the intensity to be 10%. And now I make the wavelength of light falling onto the metal plate 2, 6, 3. And let's see. This is what happened. When the wavelength is short enough, and even the intensity is quite low, there can be photoelectrons produced. So that on the emitter, you may find a reading. The reading may let you calculate how many electrons are produced. So in the actual setup of photoelectric effect experiment, there is such a evacuated tube, metal plate, and then other smaller metal plate on the other side, so-called collector, to collect the photoelectrons. There is also a variable voltage power supply, and we are going to explain to you the use of it. So the first thing that you should know is there is a frequency, so-called threshold frequency. So just now we see that that the wavelength of EM wave should be short enough in order to produce a photoelectric effect such as this. When the wavelength is short enough, that means the frequency is high enough. So 
the minimum frequency they can produce photoelectron is called threshold frequency. And when the frequency of the incident light is higher than this minimum value, higher than this threshold frequency, then there can be photoelectron produced. On the other hand, if the wavelength is longer than the threshold, no matter how long it is, as far as it is, it is longer than the threshold, no matter what intensity it is, so that the frequency of incident light is not high enough, then there would not be enough energy to start photoelectric effect. And I think you may want to know why. And let me tell you. When there is an incident light of that frequency f log, the scientists say that the light has an energy of hf naught, where h is a constant, so-called Planck's constant. If this energy is big enough to pay off so-called work function of the metal plates, which is the minimum charge for the electron to go away, then there can be photoelectron produced. And so work function explains why there is a vessel frequency to start photoemission. This Planck constant to calculate the energy of incident radiation makes use of the particle theory of light. And you can see without the particle theory of light, you cannot have that equation. You cannot explain threshold frequency easily. There are also something else difficult to explain, such as when the frequency of light is high enough, there is photoelectrons produced almost immediately. Which means when the wavelength is short enough, so that the frequency is high enough, then there is photoelectron produced. And that the number of photoelectrons is directly proportional to the intensity of light. And again, without using the particle theory of light, so called the concept of a photon, then you cannot explain it. You cannot explain why there's no time delay. You cannot explain why the number of photoelectrons is directly proportional to the brightness of the light. And the last point is about the variable voltage source connected in the circuit. So just now, the wavelength of the incident radiation is short enough to produce photoelectric effect. And you can see there are quite a number of photoelectrons arrive at the collector so to produce a large enough current. Now I'm going to make the connector negatively charged. And in this way, the electron do not want to go to the right anymore. In fact, the potential difference between the metal plates and the collector almost stop the electrons. And you can see now, many electrons when they were very energetic at the beginning, and then they slow down, they decelerate, and finally they can only stop somewhere just right in front of the collector. And in this way, the voltage supply, here it is 1.8 volts, may let you calculate the maximum kinetic energy of those photoelectrons. We may use this voltage to calculate the kinetic energy of the most energetic photoelectron. And how to do this? The calculation is simple and straightforward. This is the kinetic energy of the most energetic electron, half mv square. And then this energy is just enough to go through the potential difference. We ask the potential that we apply. And you can see, if you know Vs, you should be able to calculate the kinetic energy 
and even the speed of the most energetic electron. 